Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, Funder One's uh, monthly uh, members meeting. Uh, and uh, this, I am Jacques Laurent, Entrepreneur and Technology Services Director for Funder One LLC. And I uh, wanted to give you a warm welcome. Uh, so today's meeting is our third for the year, and it uh, will last about an hour and a half. Our next meeting uh, uh, will be in about a month, uh, the, the, on April 24th at uh, 6 p.m. So it, um, we're growing very rapidly, and you're going to see that uh, uh, during this meeting as we're bringing new people on board that can uh, make our platform stronger. Uh, one thing you might have noticed from your platform is that my crypto EX bank has been migrated, or the UBIT wallets basically have been migrated to the Fundex uh, wallet so that there's only one wallet. And there's more details coming to that, but want to make sure that for people not to panic, but they have been migrated so that it becomes one platform now. Um, um, those of you that signed up for the agent training should have received an email directly uh, uh, from me. Now, I want to make a quick note. I want to thank uh, uh, most of you for uh, following uh, the instructions. As I said, uh, my email will not be used to address everything else. It will be used for to address specific matters that I've been assigned to. So if you send me an email that has nothing to do with the things that, that I'm addressing with you, um, A, it will be ignored, and B, if I continue to get e these e emails, I will simply put you on spam, and you will not be able to send me emails. So please, let's, let's keep things as they should be so that the emails that come uh, uh, to, to me for specific tax, in this case, the training program, uh, to uh, keep it to that subject. And uh, today's presentation, as usual, we're giving updates on where we are as a company and a platform. So if you have questions, please send your questions to the chat room during the meeting. And I promise you that they are real questions and uh, we're gonna probably try something new this uh, time to uh, authenticate it. But those that their questions have been read know that we are reading their actual questions. So we wanna maintain that all the questions are questions that you have put in the chat room for us to read. Uh, we try to read as many as we can within the time allotted, but um, um, we definitely take your questions and take them very seriously. Now, um, as we can ask you to continue to put your questions in the chat room, uh, we'll do our, our best to address as many as we can as time permits. Uh, but wanna clarify questions that are, that are uh, basically uh, with a specific matter um, will not be answered because uh, they're too specific to you, they will need to be addressed uh, at, a, at a different place, okay? But I uh, want to make sure that any question that is to the benefit of the everyone at the platform will try to answer as many as possible. So today's panel will be with uh, Seth Celestin, our Chief Operating Officer, um, also with Matthew Daniel, our Marketing Director, and we also have a new partner uh, with Funder One, which, who is Edgar Caballero, um, who is on board with us. And then we have a very special guest uh, by the name of Ben Bartlett, who is a city councilman of Berkeley, California. He's also an attorney at, at law, and he's also a blockchain expert. So if you could get anything better than this, um, um, you know, that is amazing. He covers several grounds, um, uh, the legal ground, governmental ground, and the uh, technological ground. So without further ado, we're going to turn this um, over to our um, chief operating officer, who is said Celestin. Good evening, everyone. And again, as uh, uh, Jacques just mentioned here, this is our third meeting for the year. And we have a, a fantastic panel with us uh, that uh, with us right now is going to talk to us in a few minutes. But before we start, let's uh, have a few words of prayer, as usual, so we can uh, continue with the meeting. Father God, we thank you for all the blessings that you put up on us. We say thank you. We thank you for favor. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for... Uh, every single member on this uh, on this uh, platform right now. 
So as we go over this meeting, we ask you to please be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, again, we're going to have uh, Matthew Daniel. Uh, you can have the floor so you can uh, continue with this program with us. So much to talk about. We got an amazing panel with us. So I don't want to spend too much time, you know, taking the floor to myself. But uh, in any case, some, some, some amazing news that we have uh, as far as progress on the marketing side, a little bit on the coin side is, uh, you know, in our last meeting, we, we've been working to, uh, to get on coin market cap. Uh, everything is good. We're in full communication with them. There was a couple of uh, requirements that they had our um, the way that we have our platform set up to be transparent with you guys is most of our coin holders stay on exchanges so we've been communicating with our our, our traders uh, to to open up a wallet with us and and uh, so that we can put more uh, more transactions on our ether scan uh, for coin market cap that's the last step that we needed to do uh, in the last week, we've already moved up to close to about 100 new uh, coin holder wallets that are now showing on Etherscan. So what that means to everybody else is we'll be uh, looking to uh, uh, finalize our posting. You guys can actually see us on CoinMarketCap now. It's just not pulling all the, da the data yet. So, uh, you know, by midweek, let's just say by the end of next week, the latest, uh, you guys will be able to pull our price of Fundex directly on Coin Market Cap and is currently on Coin Gecko now. So um, but that's that's a big step for us uh, to finally getting that completed. Uh, next thing in line, our volume. Wow, to all of our traders out there, if there's some traders on there with us right now, uh, guys, thank you for being consistently trading and bringing in some referrals to trading with us. Our volume has stepped up from around you know 20k to 50k a day uh, in the last two months. And now we're getting pretty close to about 300 and some days 500K uh, in daily volume. So that has been a, a huge boost for us. And, and to be quite honest, guys, that is with uh, very minimal marketing. We've been pretty trying to keep this program as subtle as possible as we're getting all of our foundations set up over this last several months. Uh, we have about everything ready to, to really start pushing this thing out, as you guys know. That have been joining us we we have a uh, campaign that we've been putting together diligently over this last two months but we're calling it our national campaign marketing boost so we're looking to still continue to do that probably in the next you know three or four weeks uh where we're really going to start pushing uh fundex out uh to the public uh with with all different types of marketing uh, uh methods and strategies that we already have in place so uh we're, we're, we're really excited about that and with that being said, a lot of these updates, uh, you know, are going to be coming out a little bit more consistently. So, uh, meaning, um, you know, uh, there's going to be some movement daily, by daily, weekly. So, if you don't want to wait, you know, for a monthly meeting, please do check fundex.io. We will be uh, updating our website uh, much more consistently with all of the uh, uh, momentum that we have currently right now. So, there will be a lot more updates coming on there uh, directly. Uh, so make sure uh, you guys are uh, checking out our website uh, at least every every week to so you can find some updates. Um, so that'll be important to us as well. Uh, as far as our um, affiliate and agent training program, as, as Jack said, we, we are about to get ready to, to, to officially launch that. Uh, we've been working through a couple of uh, uh, really some software uh, uh, design and workflow is really what it's basically boiled down to. Uh, so we can make sure we really have that locked in. So when we do launch it, there won't be any uh, slowdown or any, uh, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, any distraction in making sure we're rolling this thing out correctly for everybody moving forward. So, uh, you know, we're making sure that we've, we've really laid down our software foundation properly. Uh, so we're looking to officially launch that here in the next uh, week or two. So you guys uh, make sure you do stay tuned with us so that we can uh, really start getting you guys listed as agents. And for you guys that have been waiting, thank you for your patience to be an affiliate. Uh, we'll be able to start passing out that code here uh, in the next week or two. So um, please be on standby for that as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, as um, Jackson um, I think said mentioned a little bit earlier, 
For those that have been calling in questioning about the uh, UBETS wallet, again, we have fully moved that over to the uh, Funder1EX.com platform. So your UBETS coins are safely stored on there into their wallet uh, that was on my crypto EX bank. Uh, everything has fully been moved over there. If, you, if you're having issues for whatever reason, uh, you can go to uh, the info contact information on, on Funder One EX, and we can make, uh, look into that if there's any uh, issue with being able not to navigate through the UI to find your wallet. Uh, but everything, we pulled the whole data from uh, my crypto wallet EX, and everything should have migrated um, uh, correctly. Uh, and again, if, if there's any issue, do, do just give us a call. We have a full record of everything, and we can uh, walk you through manually to make sure everything did move over there for you guys. Okay, so uh, so again, do do find our contact information on there if you guys are not able to find your wallet. Um, and another thing, just just to reiterate, for all of our members that do have UBETs, uh, you guys, you 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 don't have to worry about converting your coin into Fundex as of now. If you are a member, uh, finishing uh, your ten percent that you guys are putting to, into your wallet for your project, once you hit that ten percent. Uh, you fall into the queue and the UBETS is still being treated exactly the same as the Fundex uh, cryptocurrency. Okay, so you don't have to worry about converting your coin. We treat it exactly the same as Fundex is currently. Okay, for our new members that are coming in, as, as all of them have been coming in, you guys are all Fundex, so you don't have to worry about what UBETS is and, you know, uh, what is this different currency. Uh, uh, it was a previous currency that we were using and moving forward, uh, uh, fund, everybody's been converted into Fundex. Okay, so uh, let's be clear about that. Um, in, in some media out there, guys, as you know, Tesla took a big step, right? Tesla is now allowing people to buy their Teslas with Bitcoin. I mean, wow. I mean, here we are. I mean, they are the first automobile company out there taking the big step into this space and you know i mean if, if you know as public as they are you know get ready for this price to continue to skyrocket i mean they took the big plunge they put out all of media out there and uh you know the richest man in the world maybe second behind bezos now depending on the stock price uh you know he he's made the big step so you're going to get a lot of these other big box companies coming in looking to do the same and uh for all of us out there that are holding this coin uh, Ether, Bitcoin, Fundex. This is a huge step for everybody in this space as a public figure. So um, that's very exciting for us as well. So look, I don't want to take a lot of time here. I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed. Uh, we, we are going to be working potentially with some new exchanges here in the next couple of months as well uh, that we're going to be looking to add some more value there. Uh, and I'll be updating you guys on that next month. Okay. So uh, with that being said, I would like to introduce our first guest. Uh, his name is Edgar Caballero. He is out of Miami, and he is now a partner uh, with Funder One Capital, and he'll be bringing a ton of value to us in multiple different levels and multiple different ways. And uh, we're so proud and happy to have him part of his team, part of our team, along with his team. Uh, and uh, so please, Edgar, if you'd like to you know, bring us up to speed a little bit about uh, who you are and, and what you're up to and, and all the great things that we've been working on this last couple of weeks. Let me start off by saying uh, my uh, background is inspired by yours. So, so I decided to bring out one of my pieces for today's, uh, for today's deep dive. But uh, yeah, actually you and I, Matt, go back to, what is it, 2014, uh, yeah. when you worked on one of my projects. Uh, I'm based out of Miami, Florida. And uh, I heard of uh, the company he was working with at the time, and uh, Matt and I hit it off back then, and uh, we were able to do, you know, accomplish what we set out to do. So we've stayed in touch and collaborated over the years on, on various things, and always uh, stayed in communications. And then uh, this opportunity came across, I believe it was January of 2020, and Matt was like, hey, Edgar, you mind uh, taking this call? Sure. And little did I know that uh, a few months later, he would uh, launch it and put on various exchanges. So it was very intriguing. Uh, my background is in uh, commercial construction, real estate, in all phases. I got into the power generation industry. So we we're developing large power generation plants with complicated steam recovery units, and 
all kinds of complexity. That was interesting. And then that market kind of died and we got into renewables and did that for a bit and uh, came back to construction and development. So it was an interesting time that uh, you know, Matt came to me. So I started talking to some of my uh, relationships and partners and uh, we're looking to really contribute towards the entire project. So, you know, Funder One Capital is going to be really changing the way finance works. Uh, when you look at it from a very simple context, there's really two ger general ways that people acquire something, right? A good or a service. They either have the money, they go ahead and spend it, or in some way, they either leverage or borrow that money, right? It might be a credit card, it might be third party financing. And so really when people have a desire to acquire something, they're really limited by two things. One is how much money they have or how much credit is available to them, which imposes debt into the situation. Uh, being that, again, since I said, uh, you know, Matt and I went back some time, I went deep into finance because we had to understand the very complex structures of putting projects together. And it's a very complex, sophisticated kind of underworld, we could say, because there's a point where you really can't break through and understand the mechanics of what's happening behind the scenes, which is why cryptocurrency is so interesting because it's all transparent, it's all in blockchain. You see how many wallets are out there, you see how much volume is out there. It's, it's uh, auditable by anyone. Uh, you don't need a PhD, you don't need to be an economist. And so when we saw how under one is allowing people to now add a third option. So instead of just having the money or borrowing money, here is a third option that allows people to, in fact, leverage their asset, take real fiat currency, secure it in a uh, encrypted wallet that's bulletproof and protected, and then allow the blockchain to do what the banks and financial institutions do behind the scenes, which is leverage it, liquidate it, uh, do all that they do, but without introducing debt unnecessarily onto the transaction. And so that was an extremely compelling feature. It took me quite a bit to transmit that to my partners. Um, some are overseas. And so we're, we're really enthusiastic because we're going to be pushing a lot of resources towards this project. Um, also enhancing uh, some of the corporate content, some of the you know training videos and testimonials, things where we can uh, really supplement in terms of video because we're going to be building a studio here in uh, Miami, Florida in the Coconut Grove area, where we're going to be able to really kind of combine our synergies uh, ourselves with resources. And again, Funder One with their amazing uh, technology and platform to really help all the members and users, as well as to onboard others that are unsure, uncertain, don't understand the mechanics behind the scenes. I think you guys have done an amazing job of keeping it very simple. 10% of a project, you have that, you get funded. You have Fundex, you get funded. It's a very simple notion, but certainly once this launch kicks off, I think there's going to be an amazing enthusiasm and uh, we're here to support all you guys. Thank you so much, uh, Edgar, for joining us and uh, your kind words. And we're very much looking forward to uh, continuing our uh, relationship and partnership with you guys. And um, most importantly, looking really forward to getting out there to Miami to producing some content with you. Uh, it's, it's, uh, that's gonna be an exciting time for us. So, uh, and, and without ado, I'd like to introduce our next guest. Uh, we've had the honor of uh, meeting uh, Ben uh, Bartlett um, out of uh, uh, the Bay Area, which is not too far from myself. I'm in the Bay Area as well. Uh, ben is an elected uh, city council member of the uh, of Berkeley, California, and he's also a, a member of the, uh, the state of California uh, blockchain working group. And with that being said, he also has a, a, a deep um, um, uh, piece of his heart into producing affordable housing, uh, which I'll let him uh, give a little background into that. So with all those things uh, connected, there was just way too much synergy for, for Ben not, not to, uh, uh, to talk with us in a little bit more detail on how we could synergize our efforts uh, uh, together. And uh, without that, um, I would like to introduce uh, Ben. So Ben, please take the floor and tell us a little bit more about you and uh, you know, some of the great things we can do together. Well, thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you. It's really uh, an amazing, amazing opportunity here. Uh, wonderful to hear you speak, Edgar. 
Uh, your background sounds truly amazing. Uh, I would do. I also share some experience uh, in renewable energy and cogeneration. Uh, and said, wonderful, wonderful to meet you again and hear you speak and see you do your thing. The wonderful prayer. Uh, we're set off on the right track. Uh, so my name, yes, is, is Ben Bartlett, and I am an attorney and an elected official in Berkeley. And the work that I do uh, centers on innovation, and whether that's policies uh, or, or technologies, and I embrace them both. You know, um, I'm driven by the fact that the average American um, is slated to have a zero net worth in the next 40 years. And you see, my grandfather was the first black realtor in California, um, and he and his partners uh, had a bank and everything and created mortgages uh, for people when they couldn't buy them anywhere else. And that became the basis uh, for much of the middle class wealth uh, in the East Bay for black people, which spread out, of course, to the economy at large. And so when I think about the, the barriers to wealth creation, the number one instrument to achieve financial stability for your family is home ownership, without a doubt. And all the gains that people have made through the years have all been retracting. And we know that in 2008, we had a significant loss of home ownership. And now with the mass acquisition of properties by venture funds, et cetera, and the banks not wanting to operate and lend with small, small buyers, you have this massive glut of capacity being held by a few hands and ordinary folks can't afford the down payment to get a house. And that's the long and short of it. And now at the pandemic, we have what they call a K-shaped recovery. And a K-shape means <laughs> someone's going up, someone's going down. And the ones that are going up are gathering up more and more resources, more and more concentration. And the ones going down are doing worse and worse and worse and worse. So my mission professionally uh, and personally and politically has been to get wealth into that bottom tier and expand that circle of prosperity. So uh, I've done lots of housing policies. I helped create a new form of homeless housing, the prefabricated units that you stack up that are state of the art with a private landowner owning the land and the government leases the units from the leases to own from the person. And that, become, that became a real model. Um, it's called step up housing. And that's a big model being replicated throughout the country. Our building is going up in a few months. Uh, I also streamlined housing development. We changed the zoning in Berkeley to break up the stranglehold on single family zones so that you can make more houses for cheaper for more people. And then the last step was to make it affordable and make access to buy. And so that's what, Doug, that's what drove me to crypto technology. Um, you know, I used to work in deal making and technology and I had some facility uh, with various platforms, mobile technologies, and I used to work in finance, so I understood money. Um, so when it came time to figure out how can we explore a new form of finance as a city to, to help people get into the money and help leverage the development of new projects for people, uh, we turned to crypto. We created what they call the Berkeley ICO. And these are Berkeley, these are blockchain-based bonds. We call them micro bonds. And because the technology is so seamless, as Edgar was talking about, it allows us to issue bonds for like $5, $2 even, for small projects, one building. And the goal is to prove out the concept so that Ordinary people can own an asset that returns wealth because you're going to do a small project here and then it's going to become much larger. Imagine ordinary people buying a share of a bridge or a share of a dam or a share of a, of, of a solar generation plant and getting return for a generation, right? That's what rich people do. They invest in projects and get return. Now, when I came across you guys and the, the Funder One plan, it just blew me away because this was the, in my mind, was the missing link, home ownership. This was the tool that, uh, that I've been searching for. This was the key in the lock. Because if you can, if you can cut through all of the, the legacy, legacy entities that are holding up the wealth 
and preventing access to prosperity, then you've done it. You've changed everything. And so right now, I'm just super excited to, 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 to spend time with you guys and to be with you guys and think this through with you and help you implement it and help deliver this for the people because I think this is the game changer for our economy. We appreciate the, uh, your kind words, Ben, and we're so happy to have you uh, part of uh, uh, our team uh, as an advisor and with all your different strongholds and your background. Uh, it's a blessing that um, uh, that we're able to even link up together. So uh, we're very proud of that. And same Thank goes you. for you, Edgar, and, and for all of you guys that are joining us on this call right now. Um, so, so said, is there any other topics that uh, you, you wanted to touch base on this week uh, that we haven't covered thus far? Ben, I really appreciate your words and thoughts, and, and uh, we love it. Uh, Edgar, the same, uh, because uh, with you guys, we can uh, do a lot of, you know, things to the financial industry, because we think that we are revolutionizing the whole financial industry, because uh, what we found out that uh, there is no debt. So that's what blockchain is all about because that change is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which means if it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, there cannot be any debt. You see that? So we're gonna talk about it some more uh, as a group, as a team, so we can move forward with that. Now, one of the things that I wanted to uh, mention is that uh, the plan that we have based on our uh, investors and the uh, instruments that we have, uh, we wanted to say that uh, in mid-April, uh, we will be able to uh, to start uh, sending out the uh, approval letters for uh, projects, for different projects. So we're going to start doing that mini pool, right, uh, Matthew? Yeah. So, and also what that means is uh, for everybody that that's a member currently right now, uh, you'll start getting an agent assigned to you in the next couple of weeks, uh, uh, where they can start walking you through the process of. Uh, you know, what type of home you're looking for, if you're looking to refinance or purchase a new home. So uh, you guys will be getting direct contact from an agent to help stop, start walking you down the aisle. Uh, at, over the next uh, two weeks, uh, you guys will start being getting contacted. So we're very excited to finally getting a, a lot of you guys going here and a lot of new members uh, that are coming in. Uh, we're very blessed to have you guys and and early on in this, this process. And uh, like I said, um, this is before we're even going uh, public. So you guys are extremely early in, in uh, a revolutionizing uh, business here and what we're doing. And, and, and again, we're, we're very blessed to have you guys with us. So, uh, so in the next couple of weeks, you guys will have an agent uh, reach out directly to you uh, uh, in, in the queue order that you're in. So we can get the process started so we can help you guys get into your homes uh, ASAP. Very good. Very good. And uh, right now we can uh, move out. I don't know if uh, there's any questions on the line with uh, Jacques. If uh, anybody has questions that we need to address. Yes, I have a few questions. Um, so um, basically um, quite a few of the questions have been answered um, because uh, the big one of course is about funding and Matthew just uh, hit that. Um, uh, uh, a few minutes ago and letting everybody know, uh, uh, announcing the big news that we are going to start sending approval letters uh, starting um, April 15th. So I think that uh, has been the big thing, but let me run through a few of the questions, okay? Uh, this question is, it says, uh, I want to purchase a property which is in a trust already. Does the property have to come out of the trust before you can purchase it? Well, if they are purchasing a property in a trust, the trust doesn't belong to them. You see that? If it's somebody else's trust, they have to have their own trust. You see? Okay. Because you're purchasing that property. Right? Right. So they do have to have their own trust. So basically the answer to the question is, because they, did, they didn't clarify, so that's an excellent point. The key the, thing is they're saying they want to purchase purchase a property. It's not that they own a property. If they were to own the property and the property is in a trust already, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm purchasing a house, which means it's not mine, which means it's not in my trust, I'm purchasing it from you. So it is in your trust. 
So your, this is your trust, it's not mine. So I'm purchasing it from the trust so I can put it in my trust. Okay, so whoever, if the trust is not yours, you're purchasing it, it's not yours. So in essence, that doesn't, it's, that, it's, does, it's, that doesn't really matter. If, exactly, if I'm purchasing the property, mm -hmm. it cannot remain in that trust. You see that? Right. Because I'm purchasing it. So you're gonna take it out of trust and sell it to me. So I have to have my own trust so I can receive it. Okay. You see that? Crystal. Next question, okay, um, and that has to, to do with uh, the, um, the migration. So basically, um, uh, we have a few people here that have uh, basically saying the same thing. They have a problem to log into their account. Um, uh, and I'm assuming that they, a couple of them said my crypto, but I'm assuming that anyone that mentions that it has to do with uh, my crypto EX bank, okay? So if someone's having a problem getting into their my crypto EX bank, basically, uh, what, 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 where are we with that? That's null and void, correct? Well, uh, Matthew uh, uh, made it clear. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have UBETS, which means UBETS is in my crypto EX bank, right? And you want to get into your account, you have to go to fundex, e fundex, funder1ex.com. When you go in there and you look for UBETS and you click on UBETS and then you can go in and look for your assets and you're gonna see it right there. Nothing, nothing changed. Because all we did, we migrate, all the developer migrated uh, all the UBETS wallet from my crypto EX bank into funder1ex.com. Uh, That's all they did. They didn't do anything, they didn't change anything. Nothing has changed because they don't have the password. They cannot change anything. They just migrated yeah. all the, 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 the whole platform into the new one. But now you have to go to uh, from the one ex.com and then go down to your bets and then you click on it and then you can get into your wallet. Yeah, and okay. just to reiterate, again, this is Matthew. Um, if you're having issues, not all of us are website or technology experts, right? So if you're having problems, you can email us at support and, and Jack, maybe you can drop this in the chat for everybody. It's uh, support at funder numeric one, funder one ex.com. Okay, so if you're having problems getting in there, uh, understanding, navigating through the website, then just email us and we'll have uh, somebody uh, call you guys so we can walk you through it. Last thing we want is you guys to be stressed out on the migration. So just send us an email and uh, we'll have uh, somebody contact you so we can walk you through. Okay, so that's perfect. Uh, Funder one EX, EX, make sure you get that EX. Oh, after. okay. Yeah, don't go to that email because that won't go anywhere. So let's get that. I got you. <laughs> so, so let me, re, let me resend it. Great. All right, so let's go to the next question and I'll make that correction. Um, so. Next question um, has to do, I've had several questions with the training, okay? Um, uh, so uh, basically um, there's been quite a few people um, that have been asking if they could still, they're not on the list yet. They didn't sign up a couple months ago and they've been asking if they can still get on the uh, training, uh, uh, can they be added to the training? Is it too late for anyone that did not sign up two months ago? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. So, so can you check to see if anybody has any type of uh, question for our panel? Um, yeah, there is. I mean, I'm talking question. about Ben and uh, Edgar. Yeah, I do have one uh, that is particularly referring to Edgar. That was going to be my next, uh, actually, that was uh, my second next, but I'll go straight to, um, to Edgar. So mm -hmm. with, with Edgar, uh, there was one question. Uh, give me one second, okay. So with Edgar, there was one question um, at, that uh, they asked. Um, they were asked, Edgar mentioned something about a launch. They asked, and, and they asked when is, um, when is the launch schedule that Edgar is referring to? So that was one of the questions they had uh, for him, so. So the answer to that is very soon. 
we're, we're kind of on a similar timeline as, uh, as you all. So we feel probably within the next, you know, 30 days or so, we should be really taking things forward and, and uh, building value for the members. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, our, our um, relationship is strictly support. So we're here to provide resources in various fashions. And uh, some of it is uh, legal, some of it is intellectual property. Um, we're also looking to enhance housing projects as well with uh, another technology we have, which was on a previous uh, deep dive that I did for you guys a few months back. So there's, there's a lot of moving parts. We're really, really excited. We've got a really nice uh, family type of uh, team. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be able to work and collaborate with, um, with Funder One executives and staff really closely so that we can just build this all together. So uh, Edgar, also you want to mention the uh, the building out there in uh, Miami and uh, the what you have in mind and how we're going to get it set up? Sure. So there's a neighborhood in Miami called Coconut Grove. It's not anything like what you're hearing in South Beach right now, in South Miami Beach. Uh, this is on okay. the mainland. And uh, Coconut Grove sits right along the waterfront, so it's got a beautiful marina. It's a very walkable village type um, community. Uh, it's essentially about six city blocks, not very large at all. It's got lots of eateries. It's, like I said, very walkable, uh, very safe. And uh, there's a premier office building that just went up. And uh, we're in the process now of negotiating the entire penthouse fifth floor suite. Uh, it's a very unique property in that in, in Miami, it's the only building I've ever seen. In fact, the realtor said it, where the view is a forest and behind the forest is the ocean. So there's no tall buildings or anything that obstructs the view. So that would be the backdrop for the intended backdrop for some of the video content we'd be shooting. So similar to like the way you guys are gathered here, you'd be kind of almost like a news panel, have a nice counter. And that would be the backdrop behind it. What's interesting too is the um, top floor is actually an open top lounge. And so there's gonna be a restaurant operator in there as well. So we'll be doing again, due to you know, social distancing and that sort of thing, we'll have the options to also do things on that open rooftop and open air, um, which is a very unique thing. Uh, and again, it's a very unique building situated in a beautiful area um, and it's easy to reach. And uh, for the people that are part of the team, they're going to find it's just it's going to be a really good fit, quality of life that's really good in the area as well. So, well, can you mention uh, who's going to occupy that floor? Right. So it would be myself and our team. <laughs> uh, that would be our our main headquarters for um, for our partners, uh, general operations in the United States. And then there'd be an, a site dedicated for Funder One to operate as much or as little as they like. Um, there's a large uh, Spanish language contingent in, in South Florida, as well as a large Haitian Creole community. Uh, there's uh, Portuguese, there's a lot of Russian. Uh, so we could also help support in those um, minority groups that may feel that they're disenfranchised, not to mention the African-American community, which is adjacent to the Scoven Grove area. There's a large African-American community as well. So they can do their operations from there. There's two separate data closets that are intended. So you could have your own server separate from ours. You'd have your own key card access. And then there'd be a large space that would be separated to be an actual uh, filming and recording studio, which is where we could record videos such as this and other types of training, corporate content, old events. Um, and again, train other agents and other people that are going to be obviously part of this because this is going to be a huge movement right to close on a house you need appraisers you need uh title companies you need uh people that can do home inspections uh there's going to be runners that are going around notarizing documents and things like that because some traditional you know title agencies are going to be kind of on the less digital side of things they'll need hard copies um and that's somewhat required from state law in certain jurisdictions so we're gonna actually create a lot of jobs as, as this rolls forward. It's not just going to be members. Uh, and so we're foreseeing all the different areas where we can, again, provide resources and make sure that we have uh, certain, you know, steps and programs in place to preempt uh, bottlenecks so we can keep the process as smooth as possible. We know a lot of your members have been waiting on, on their properties to close. 
And we certainly don't want to be an impediment to that. So we certainly want to help uh, kind of push things along. So we partner with a large um, real estate attorney that's here. Um, again, there's other uh, escrow agents that you guys have selected for your members, uh, but he'll be responsible with um, directing the actual capital. This is US dollar cash for your members' closings. And so his position is very um, important because everything starts and stops with the release of those funds. So we're again, working very closely with his team so that we can, again, speed things along. So once we get really rolling, I think uh, your team members would be really happy with how fast we can close. The only thing that should be the limit would be the governments. This would be the municipalities, the jurisdictions in getting back their title reports. Because anytime there's a closing, we want to make sure there's no liens on a property. We want to make sure that there's no uh, federal taxes or anything that's encroaching on that title. And so, unfortunately, we just have to wait till those reports come back from the cities. And so that's something we can't control. But if we can control everything else, that's what we're looking and aiming to do. So that, again, we can get this expedited as quickly as possible because we've got more capital coming. And so we, we certainly can feed the beast, so to speak. And we're looking forward to that. Very good. Thank All you right. for clarifying that because you keep it in a, you know. <laughs> okay, very good, uh, Edgar. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Edgar. So um, I don't see any questions related to, uh, for the councilman, uh, but uh, I do have quite a few questions because uh, a bunch of questions started popping up right after I started asking the questions. Um, so let me try to go through, um, um, uh, through uh, this. So, so one question was, how do you sign up an affiliate, as an affiliate? So um, the process is simple in the chat room. Yep. So put in uh, your name, put in okay. your phone and your email address. We need those three items so we can include you in the list. Okay, go ahead, uh, Matthew. So I'll add to that, guys. So go we're going to make it real simple for you guys, all right? Um, and that's why I was talking about some updates to the website. So uh, for those that are, like, anxious, you want to get in now, just email us at fun. Uh, uh, if you've already talked with Jax, continue that uh, approach to becoming an affiliate or an agent. Um, if you, uh, if you can just hold on like four or five days, uh, we're going to open up a, um, a form, um, directly on funder one, uh, excuse me on fundex.io. Okay. We're going to open up a page on there and you guys can just come straight in there, fill out the form, fill out all the appropriate information, and then it'll go straight into our database. And then it'll go right into a system where we can give you guys an exact date with all of the information that you need so you can have all your affiliate package, okay? So I would highly recommend, you can just be a little less anxious, just wait till we get that page up and then fill out the form that gets you into the system because I think it'll make it a lot actually faster rather than trying to push it uh, the way that we previous have had it, right? We're trying to clean up that process to make it easier for you guys. So, um, uh, so yeah, so just hang in there. Uh, check out funder, excuse me, fundex.io maybe by the end of the week and we should have a form up and you guys can fill it out and we can get you set up a lot quicker. Okay, so um, so great, wonderful. Okay, next question. Um, and I'm okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, I guess another question related to um, to agents. Um, uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take two questions and put them together because it, it, they're probably gonna be able to be answered a lot more quicker that way. Um, one question is, okay, can you choose your own agents? Okay, and uh, the other question is, um, I have a realtor, real estate agent. Does that person has to become a funder one agent? So if you could. Um, I figured I'd make it easier to uh, break down those two, those two questions. Well, they're talking about closing, Zed. So when they're ready to close and they get their letter, uh, do they have to use a funder one agent or can they use their own? Can you answer that for me? Well, basically, uh, right now, in uh, different areas, we do not have agents or we don't have uh, funder one agents and we don't have uh, real estate agents in those uh, locations. So now if that's the case, it's okay for you to have your own agent. 
Now, the only difference is we have to speak with that agent, explain to them what we're doing, so that way they understand it. Because most real estate agents, they only understand the way the banks do a uh, do the funding, which means the client come in, get a loan, get approved, and they move to the next phase. Whereas we, the way we have it set up right now, we're gonna the second that the client actually find the property, they have a signed contract, and now we are able to order the appraisal and get the, all that going and the inspection and all because we want to make sure that the property that we have a, we receive a contract on the property actually exists. It's extremely important for to funding. So we need to make sure that there's a contract, number one. Number two, there's an appraisal and inspection. Once the, we, we at least have the appraisal, we can actually, uh, we will, not can, but we will send the funds to the, the title company because we have a key title company that we're gonna send the funds to before we get to that, that last, uh, to closing. Why? Because that will eliminate all the uh, all the issues that we've been having, whether in Georgia or in Florida. Because once the title company received the funds after we received the appraisal, now we are waiting for the inspection to be done and also for the paperwork to be signed by the client. So that particular title company will send the, the, uh, the funds to the uh, closing title or whether it's an attorney excuse me, whether it's an attorney or an actual title company, that title company will send the money directly to that uh, to the closing agent, you see, for closing. So they don't have to call the funder anymore because the funder will send the funds. Once they have the, do receive the appraisal, they can actually send the funds to that uh, title company. And this that particular title company will be the one that's sending the funds to the closing agent or the attorney or the title company that's, uh, or escrow, if it's in California. Like California, we use escrow. We don't use title company for, for closing. The escrow does the closing and then they send it to the title company for recording here in California. But in other states, some of them, they have attorneys, some of them, they actually have actual title companies, which are a little bit different. So in order for us to eliminate all that issues, all those issues that we've been having for the past few months, we're gonna send the fund directly to that particular assigning uh, title company that we have in our platform to receive the funds and then they will can be connected to that closing title or closing escrow or closing uh, attorney and then they're gonna send the funds to them. So the, uh, the funder is, our funders will be out of it basically. So as far as the agent, uh, Yes, you can have your own agent uh, do this, uh, write the contract for you, but we need to speak with that agent before he actually, he or she actually uh, write the contract and present the offer and get it accepted. Because there's one thing we want to make for sure that all our members understand. When you're purchasing a piece of property, there's closing call that you have to, somebody has to pay. Funder one or Fundex, we do not pay closing costs. We do not cover closing costs. We don't. We only fund the actual project, which means if you're purchasing a house for $500,000, we're going to send a check or wire or fund to that title company for $500,000. Now, what we're saying for our members to do is to talk with the agent because you have that right to do that, to ask the seller to pay your closing costs. There's different ways to do that. But now, based on the market right now, understand, based on the market right now, the agents, they are scared of presenting a just uh, an offer to the seller and asking for closing costs. So there's ways to do that. And that's where I come in. I, I will take the time and speak with that particular agent to let them know or train them how to do it without hurting the, the, uh, the offer. So I will do that, I will take the time to do that. So that's why I'm saying I, I need to speak with that particular agent 
that way not a penny comes from your pocket i want to make that clear I, we can help you with that but fund the one and fund dex on uh, they we not responsible to pay your closing costs we only pay for the project or the asset that's all we do because we tokenize the asset for you that's what we do just the asset now if you have other things like uh, we can fund uh, uh like let's say a car or student loans that's different those are different assets that you're going to bring into the table but if you're talking about closing costs it's not an asset it's money that need to pay for tax taxes uh, insurance and all this stuff so this is separate so let's keep it that separate okay all right okay so um that was uh, some good detail so just to refer back to the question you have the funder one agent which is different from the real estate agent so uh, yes so funder one agent that's what we're talking about agent training mm -hmm. so you understand how the program works under funder one for the fund X. exactly okay? so um so um as said um explaining uh, thoroughly that's a realtor that from your state that gets exactly. license. That's totally different. Nothing to do with Funder One. So those two, just like you, so the Funder One agent would be the equivalent of a loan officer with um, um, another bank, for example. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I just want to make sure that everybody's clear on that because that's that's the question I'm seeing being asked. Um, and the question, what uh, uh, the other part of the question was, um, can I choose who is my agent? Now, um, as you broke it down. Um, I'm not 100% clear if the person is asking if they could choose their real estate agent or if they could choose their funder one agent. So, well, the, the funder one agent will be the person that introduced them to the platform. You see that? So, okay. if that person introduced you to the platform, you're not going to be looking for another agent, you see. But the real estate agent is the one that you can pick and choose. Because just uh, maybe some, it can be a, mem a family member or it can be anything else. So that's, that's different. So they are talking about the real estate agent. Yes, they can pick their real estate agent. Now, if you, they are in Florida, in different areas, like Orlando, for example, we have uh, agents that are on the platform already that will ease the, uh, 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 the whole thing, the whole process for them. And in Miami, in some areas, Fort Lauderdale, we also have agents or brokers in that area that they can also use, you see. But in other states, like in uh, uh, Georgia, we also have agents, real estate agents that uh, they can use. But uh, in New York, we have a couple. But in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts, also, we have a couple. But it just depends on where you live, because if you live way out there in the, in the uh, yeah, you know, outside of the city, if you, you may have to use a, a local agent, so that, that agent can represent you effectively. Okay, great. So um, our next question has to do uh, 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 something you mentioned uh, earlier. You said peer, with peer-to-peer, -peer, there can be no debt. And someone asked uh, for you to explain that a little bit. Um, well, it, it's, it's pretty simple. What is a peer-to-peer? Peer-to-peer, I go to a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, let's say. Uh, I go to the store and purchase a shirt. The store tell me how much it is. I say, it's $100. I say, okay, I give you $100. You give me the shirt. It's a peer-to-peer. -peer. The transaction is done. You see? But now what the banks do, whereas uh, on, in blockchain, uh, uh, Satoshi made it clear, all, transaction, all transactions are peer-to-peer. -peer. And that's the quote-unquote that we need to study. So now when it comes to us as a platform, we understand what uh, Satoshi means when he mentioned that. He said all transactions are peer to peer. Because let's say for instance, you say you're gonna purchase a house for 500,000, for example, $500,000. The bank asks you to come in with 10% down, which is uh, $50,000, right? The $50,000 you're gonna bring in, you're gonna bring it on a form of cashier check or money order. What is a cashier check or money order? It's a note. 
And the bank say, okay, you're gonna bring in a note for 10%, and then we're gonna give you another note for 90% to sign for us. You see that? 90 plus 10 is 100 percent you see so which means the five hundred thousand dollars that you purchase the house for is paid on the table that's why they call it closing it's closed it's done it's finished it's over if you look at the hard one you're gonna see on the bottom everything balance and at the end is zero if it was to be more than zero that particular entity, financial institution or bank will send you the difference. And they still claim you have to make a payment. You give them a note. Actually, you give them two notes. You give them a note for 10%, you give them a note for 90%, and the total is 100%. And they call it closing. And you're still making payments every month. It's simple. That's why I say it all the time. Satoshi is a banker. He knew exactly what the banks were doing when they pulled the plug in the mortgage and, uh, business of the, uh, uh, the financial institution back in 2007, 2008. That's why he created blockchain and Bitcoin. Okay. All right. So um, next question. I think we've discussed this question a few times, but uh, since... Uh, uh, the asking, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna put it out there. Should we create a trust in advance to get ready? Yes, if you uh, if you can create the trust, yes. Uh, the way you create it uh, is uh, you can be the trustee if you be the one signing for the for the trust, and the wife, your wife, if you have a wife, can be the uh, the trustor, and then the kids can be the beneficiary. That's the difference between us and the banks. The banks call you the trustor, what is a trustor? The trustor is the creator. You're the one that give life to whatever that is. And then how can the trustee on the other side can foreclose on you? You're the trustor, you're the creator. And that's why we, we say it on our documents, we are the only platform that create a true trustor. Because since you're the creator, you know, you're the one that give life to whatever that is, whether it's a loan or mortgage, whatever it is, you give life to it. So how can you be foreclosed on without your authority? Now the banks can come in and foreclose on you as the trustee and you do trust or they foreclose on the trust or. That doesn't make sense. You see? Okay. So we need to have your own trust and a family member can be the trust or you be the trustee because only the trustee can sign. And the kids, if you have any, or another family member can be the beneficiary. Awesome. awesome. So next question. Um, and I got a couple of those. But one, say, one it says, can you refinance? And another one says, can you refinance your property using your coins? So uh, can you answer? Well, in order for you to uh, fund any project in our platform, you have to have a uh, uh, Fundex. There's no way around that. So of mm -hmm. course, you can use your coins to do that. Now, how you do that, we ask you, you have to have at least 10% in your wallet. And once you have the 10%, you approve to actually fund the project. Okay. What was the other question? So the question was, can you refinance? In other words, okay. Uh, now you can. We can uh, eliminate the debt for you. Mm -hmm. It's not refinance because when and the second that you say finance, which when you bring us back to the uh, to the fiat system, you see, we don't want to stay in the fiat system. We are in blockchain. You see, the fiat system is controlled by the Federal Reserve System, which is refinance. Finance, right? When you, well, what we can do for you, we can tokenize the property for you, that you, whatever property you have, we can tokenize the property, create liquidity, and eliminate the debt for you. So that's what we do. If you already have the property, we can do that. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, um, just real quick, um, for those that are signing up, because I'm seeing this in the chat room, uh, if you're signing up in here uh, for the uh, the agent training, 
make sure that you have your full name, your email address, and your phone number. Because I'm already seeing some people just, yeah, I want to be an agent, and here's my phone number, and they don't even have their full name as, you know, in, in the chat room. It has their last name or first name or whatever it is. So we don't know who you are. So, um, so make sure your full name, your email, because the communication will be through email. Um, and, and your phone number is for the, if there's anything specific, we want to make sure to reach you, be able to reach you. But beyond that, the primary tar target is to reach you by email. So we need your full name, your email, and your phone number. It says here, the federal central banks sound like they are planning on a response to cryptocurrencies as it's undermining their control of traditional fiat. What contingencies do you have in place if Bitcoin and crypto is, is outlawed like what we're seeing in India? Okay, based on what's going on right now, we know that Elon Musk, uh, Musk actually just uh, put in $1.5 billion in, uh, in blockchain and in cryptocurrency specifically. And uh, we have so many billionaires that actually uh, put in, uh, in fact, this morning, there's one uh, major billionaire out in, uh, in uh, Europe that just uh, partnered with uh, one of, uh, of the major uh, uh, exchanges, okay? That's a good sign for us. When we have all the billionaires, we have Mark Cuban, a lot of us uh, know about him. He put in a lot of money right now, he's, uh, he's all over cryptocurrency right now. At first, they were talking about uh, Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency like uh, a sham, or they call it all kinds of names. Now, all of them are coming in. You have uh, Chase. Chase is the feds, period. Chase is, has its own coin, okay? We have Wells Fargo. They have their own coin. It, all the banks, uh, you have uh, Mellon, uh, New York Mellon Bank. They're all over cryptocurrency right now because right now they're accepting, uh, they tell the client, they're accepting them to come in with their wallets. They can actually save it for them. So for uh, right now, for us to see uh, the Federal Reserve System, which, quote unquote, doesn't have nothing to do with the United States, to come with anything that can fight with all the billionaires. Remember, all the billionaires, they are part of the 2% that we always talk about. They control what's going on in, in the world. They're part of the 2%. So now if those billionaires or part of the 2% are the one pushing cryptocurrency or specifically uh, Bitcoin and blockchain, because they cannot push Bitcoin without blockchain. You see that? So for them right now, blockchain is very good for them. Whatever they're doing, whatever business that they're in, they have to embrace it. blockchain. And you cannot have blockchain without cryptocurrency. And the governments, uh, I mean, uh, 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 Ben just mentioned, is uh, that's why he does a uh, blockchain uh, technology for uh, Berkeley. And I don't know if uh, anybody knows about Berkeley. Berkeley is one of the major cities here in California, you see? We have uh, Berkeley University. I mean, everybody talk about all over the world. So, but uh, Berkeley is not a small city. It's one of the council men out there, okay? The into blockchain. So now if we have all the state, most of the states, we have uh, Texas, for example, and some other state that are really pushing blockchain technology and pushing cryptocurrency specifically. Now, I don't see how uh, the Federal Reserve System can come in and block us out. I don't see it. But again, we're all here, right? So we we, we yet to see what uh, what they're gonna be doing, but I don't think they'll be doing anything, okay? So I'm myself personally, I'm confident that where we're going, we're going in the right direction because uh, uh, like I was mentioned to a group, uh, we are the only platform. We are the only platform that record our instruments, you say instrument, because what we do, we create money. We record our instruments in the courthouse and the county recorders and blockchain. There's no such thing. No other platform has done it. Because what they do, they record their assets only in blockchain, not the courthouse, not the county recorders. You see that? So which means we give 
to true value to our members because whatever you do for us is recorded first at the county recorders, second, the courthouse, third, in blockchain. So the records are there and nobody can ever pull it out. You see? So any group that says they, they tokenize, they do this, they do that, they do everything in the cloud, quote unquote, and in blockchain. But we go straight to the government agencies where the records are recorded or where the records are, I should say, okay? So we are confident that most uh, uh, groups or agencies, they will embrace what we are doing because we're doing it straight the way the government agencies or uh, everybody wants it. Next question is, can we invite guests to Fundex monthly meeting and will people like Edgar and B consistently uh, on monthly meetings to speak? Well, we can only go based on their uh, availability, right? Uh, uh, as we know, uh, uh, Ben is a very, is very busy. We're going to ask him every time if he has time to speak with us. Of course, he will be there. And I'm sure Edgar will do the same. And we have others that, uh, you know, we have Rich, he's another one of them. Uh, he was gonna be, he was gonna try to be here with, with us today, but uh, based on uh, other engagement, he couldn't make it. Uh, we have others that are, who wanted to come to the meeting today, but they, 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 they some of them were there, they were on the, on the phone. They couldn't be there with us uh, uh, to speak, but. Uh, Actually, Actually, I saw Dr. Casual Pitts. He was in there for a little while. He's not in here anymore, but uh, so was uh, Rich Dotson. They were both on the platform for a period of time. Exactly. So all these people have been in the back. And my guess is this person who asked this question is probably their first meeting. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we've been doing this for about nine months now, but um, for typically, uh, particularly last six months, we've had you know, at least one or two uh, different people on the platform. Uh, to come and speak and, and, and talk about the platform as well as what's going on, you know, out there in the market. So, so, so yes. The next question is if you have been contacted uh, uh, by me regarding the agent training, uh, do we still need to fill in the form? Um, no, as uh, Matthew had said, if you have already been contacted, we already know that you want to be in the training. So you don't need to let us know again. Uh, but if you have not received an email from, from me uh, saying that you have been um, uh, registered for the, um, for the training, um, then you need to go on the website, you know, or you need to put those information in the chat room, okay? Um, the next question is, uh, is Fundex using a national company that can handle all states? Uh, the, uh, I guess they're saying they're hearing you mention California, Georgia, Florida. Um, uh, so is Fundex uh, able to um, handle all states? Very good, very good question. Uh, Fundex can actually, uh, we can fund projects all over the world. We don't need a license because we only do on blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. Using blockchain, that's number okay. one. Number two, we are using a trust which means if you are in a state, I mean, I know United States, uh, we don't hear, we don't have this problem. But now if you are in a country that you cannot create a trust, now we have an issue. We may not be able to close in that country. But if you are in a country where you can create a trust, yes, we can close the transaction. Because if you create a trust, the trust will have a, a I don't know if they call it a VIN number or whatever number, because you have to have a number for that trust that actually, uh, for them to recognize that trust within that country. So we will need to have that number so we can uh, uh, record it at that, in that country. So, because it has to be recorded at that country be first at the courthouse, at the county recorders before we can take it to blockchain because that's our process. And we already clear that so we can do that with no problem, right? So uh, we can close transaction uh, transactions in any country. The only difference right now, are we ready 
the only question. Are we ready to do that? We are not quite ready because we need to fund what we have here in the United States first so it can branch out. Because as we uh, close more transactions, more projects in the United States, we will have more funding available to us. As we grow like this, you will be able to take it wherever it is. Okay, great, great, great. Um, uh, another question related to funding. Um, what if your yeah? What if you found a seller um, that doesn't have a, like a listing agent? Doesn't have an agent? Is is that okay? Is that project okay? Okay. Now, one thing that we want to keep clear is that we want all our transactions to be an uh, arm length transaction. We cannot keep it as a family transaction. We cannot do that. Just like a regular bank will not let you do that. We're not gonna. We we cannot have that. You see. So which means let's say. You have uh, uh, somebody who tries to sell you a house, for example. We we'll say, okay, you have to write that contract. Somebody has to write it, right? So we need to have an agent to write it. There's more than one reason for that. That protects you as the owner of the property, and that also protects us. Because let's say, for instance, you purchase this property directly from this particular person, and the property has issues with it. And you don't know about it. You don't know how to check on those things. Now, after we close escrow, we found out that the, the property has issues. Who are you going to go to? That owner already got his money and he took, excuse me, took a parachute and gone. You cannot go after him, right? Because whatever you say, you can say, well, I did tell you this. I did tell you that. Whereas if you have a real estate agent involved, his or her license on the line to make sure that everything or he disclose, he or she disclose everything about the property to you. So that right there, you protect yourself because the agent actually pay, uh, pays them a fee every month to whether it's to every state, or, I mean, uh, every uh, four years or three years, whatever, depending on the state for those type of damages which means if there's any issues on the transaction, you can go to that uh, company or institution for, for, to receive damages, right? But now, if you don't have an agent, you do deal directly with the seller and there's issues on the foundation of the property, the sewer line doesn't work and the water cannot flow. I mean, you name it, the roof is leaking. I mean, you on your own. And now you're gonna come to us and tell us, well, I just purchased the property on the platform and here's what I have. We cannot help you because we don't have nothing to do with the property. We just tokenize it for you to create the liquidity, you see? So that's why we say, okay, in order for us to eliminate all the headache, you have to have an agent, a licensed agent. And then that will free us up from all those headaches. Awesome, awesome. So next question is the person that introduced me to the project is also um, an agent. Can I still work for that person? In other words, can this person work as a funder one agent as well as a real estate agent? That's what I'm assuming this question is asking. Well, this case, uh, I, well, we love this, this, this agent. We love her. We love her. You see, if she's an agent of uh, uh, a real estate agent and uh, he or she is an agent uh, to uh, fund the one. That's perfect because uh, she already understands how to represent uh, Fundex or Fund the One when he come when he or she comes to speak with the uh, the seller. That's great. Awesome. awesome. Okay, so we're um, we're getting close to time to wrap up. So I'm going to throw out a couple more questions uh, before closing out. So one, one uh, question is, you mentioned something about car loans and school loans. Does that mean we can finance cars through our coins? Okay. Now, we're, there's two things. There's a finance. With the second you say finance again, you take us back to fiat. We don't want to get there. We don't want to go there. And we are not going to finance. No, we're not going to finance a car for you. Let's say you already have a car, you owe 50000 100000 on it. Yes, you can add it to your project. Let's say you, know, uh, uh, you say, well, uh, adding a car. I want to purchase a car, a better car for me and myself or my wife or whatnot. 
and the car is 50,000. What we ask you to do is to go to the dealership and ask them to give you a contract. They can print that for you without you giving them a penny. They can do that. Once they give you that uh, contract and then you send it to us, we make it part of the project. Now at the end, the title company, when we fund the project or your project, which is the house and the car, but the one gonna be together, let's say the house is 500, the car is 60,000. So the total will be 560,000. So you need to have 10% of that full amount. You see? So now once you have that, you have the property and you have the contract, right? Now we can say, okay, I pick this car, which is a white car, okay? And it has all this function in it, all these uh, 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 belts and whistles in it. That's the one I want, for example, and it costs 50,000. And when we're ready to close, let's say the dealership say, okay, this car is not available anymore. Okay, what, what, what's next? We can get a blue one, we can get a black one, we can get another white one, whatever. If it's less, it's less, because if it's more, we make adjustment. But the key thing is we need to have that contract so we can pay out directly the dealership. We're not gonna give you the funds for you to pay them, you see that? So the title company or your attorney or the escrow is the one that's gonna send the funds to that dealership directly because they wanna verify that whatever it is that you're purchasing is available. If not, they're gonna say, okay, because you have to give them an updated contract to, to uh, fit that amount, which means the amount is 50,000. You have to get another car that's uh, 50,000. They're gonna give you a new contract and then they can go on and fund it for you with no problem. I think we're going to wrap up at this point. Do you have any last closing statements you wanna give us said before I close out? Okay, very good. So number one thing I wanna do is to thank uh, our members for uh, being so patient with us. And we came from a long way. And just uh, from day one, I've been saying the same thing that we are building a community. And when you're building a community, there's things that you have to do to make sure that once you built it, you cannot fall down. So that's important. So I thank you all for, uh, for being with us. And we wanna thank uh, uh, Ben for being here with us. And uh, we, we can't wait to really get into it because uh, there's a lot of uh, things that we need to share together to make it work on the platform. Because myself, when it comes to technology, I'm one of the guys that like to you know, ask questions and see how we can uh, make the platform better and can really serve the community that we build up. Now, Edgar, again, uh, I, I uh, thank you personally for uh, being there with us. And as uh, we know that you're working with uh, some of your investors and that's why you actually have the office. Uh, so we can call it uh, our, in, may call it our corporate office in, uh, in the state of Florida. And we cannot wait for us to uh, open the office so we can now have the, the studio and everything right there in that office. So for the members, the, for the Floridians, uh, we're going to have an office and uh, actually the building's already there. It's just a matter of uh, signing the paperwork so we can get it moving. So anything that uh, the Floridians need, uh, they, they'll be able to either, I mean, go directly to that office over there in Florida, uh, Coconut Grove, that's where it's going to be. And that'll be our corporate office for the state of Florida. And I thank uh, you, Jack, for uh, being there with us and uh, uh, Matthew and uh, all the members and everybody that participated in this, uh, whether with questions and uh, in, the, in this meeting, because uh, like we mentioned earlier, uh, the plan is uh, we already have, the, we see the green light to start sending out uh, approval letters in mid-April, in mid-April, thank God. So I know that uh, most of our members are very happy to hear that. So we can, uh, they can receive uh, their uh, approval letters based on uh, the queue, because we have a queue that's already been created uh, with uh, different uh, members in it. So we're gonna send out these letters as, as uh, we have it. So uh, be with us and uh, pay, be patient. And we all gonna receive our, uh, our price which is uh, our properties will be 
uh, our debt will be eliminated by uh, once we tokenize the properties for you. Again, I thank you. Have a uh, good night and a good week, of course. And we will see you next month. So, uh, uh, Jacques, you can, you know, take it from there. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your patience and uh, for your understanding. So we're going to close out. We look forward to seeing you um, next month. Uh, the anticipated date is April 24th. So uh, look forward to an email from us letting you know of the next meeting. Uh, so um, we hope you got um, plenty of good information, and we hope to see you next time. In the interim, stay safe. Good night.